Hello everyone, welcome to one of a series of uh, interviews from the Festival of the Sound in Paris Sound, Ontario. My name's Keith Horner and I'm helping celebrate 30 years of music making, of fine music making, at the Festival of the Sound. Today the sun's trying to shine out there, succeeding from moment to moment. Uh, there's not much of a breeze, relatively calm outside by the looks of it, just a bit of a swell. But inside the Stocky Center, we have three fine musicians who have a knack for making waves. Now, the medium of the piano trio, violin, cello, piano, hasn't traditionally been associated with making waves and innovation. But the Griffin trio, to my ears, have spent the past decade and a half not only doing surprising innovative things, but they've done this while honing and polishing the traditional repertory of the past, the great repertory of the piano trio. And achieving a balance between the two is not always easy. So violinist Anna Lee Patipitanakun, cellist Roman Boris, and pianist Jamie Parker, welcome back to the Festival of the Sound. It's great to have the Griffin Trio here again. Thank Thanks, you. Kate. Great to be back. Do you remember when you first came to the uh, Festival of the Sound? Well, you'd think that'd be a, an obvious question that we would have been prepared to answer. I'll tell you the, one thing. I remember wanting to come to play at the Festival of Sound for many years. It took, you know, it took, it took a while. Uh, I mean, a while. I mean, we were, we were young, and right away we wanted to play everywhere, you know, including here. And uh, we knew about Jim and the festival, and uh, I... I remember the first festivals. I think we probably played Brahms B major or something like that, and it was, you know, it was very hot. And I mean, you'll you'll continue describing the environment. I'm sure it was very well, hot. That's right. Uh, I mean, I, I remember you know growing up in Vancouver and and hearing, you know, hearing you know you know all of all of you guys in CBC, uh, you know, when it was Arts National, you know, and saying uh, we're here live at Festival Hall in Perry Sound, and so so we come here and then we go, what. But this is the hot, sweaty, stinky high school gym. <laughs> well, I guess that's what it is. Uh, but, but I mean, there was always such a great atmosphere, as, as evidenced by this crowd, you know. So, so you always, um, you, you always treated it like a, like a, like a wonderful opportunity to share music. So, is that the the most prominent thing you remember from those? The the temperature, basically. I remember that. I do remember one time. Uh, I think I think it was I think I was playing with Martin Martin Beaver. Uh, this was a long time ago, and it was uh, well. I'll demonstrate. <clears throat> so we're you know we're playing some Mozart song or something you know, I, um, you know. and then you hear this. <laughs> you, you hear this like massive train. The train blowing right by you, you know, and and so I do remember we having to stop. The odd, the odd performance, and then again, again for CBC, if they were taping for broadcast, uh, there would be requests. Uh, could we redo that opening movement just because you know to get the train whistle out? <laughs> the F minor train whistle, and then yeah. we started leaving it in, and then Gary Kalesher actually uh, incorporated oh, it okay. into a piece that he wrote for the festival. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we have different acoustics, let's say, with the wonderful Stocky Center. Can we talk a little bit about acoustics and what the difference really is from, let's start from a string point of view. I mean, what difference does fine or do fine acoustics make when you're playing? And then, then you go over to, you know, to St. Petersburg, for instance, where we played in this, this old Glinka Hall, and it's just mm. sort of a European shoebox. Um, that was a really, really sort of prominent kind of experience for us because we, we, I had a brand new cello that I was playing at that time. It was, it was just a, a new acquisition and it was brand new. It was very nice, I liked it. But when I played that cello on that stage, it felt like a Strad. It oh. felt like I had just infinite control. Any of, of the cello's weird s spots were just, I didn't, I didn't need to worry about them. They were still there, but there were so many other interesting things that I could do. And that's what goes on um, uh, in the Stocky Center here. I mean, that's, yeah. that's the same thing. You have to figure out how, you know, what it is that the hall wants to do. You have to figure out that uh, you don't really have to overplay. Actually, that's a tough one, because if you're enthusiastic, you want to just keep filling the place with yeah. more and more sound. But you don't have to do that. You know, you can work. So, so you feel that individually, and a yeah. lead is that, do you feel the energy from the other players well, the same way? 
as n not only just the other players, but what I was going to comment, I agree with everything Romans just said, but the other great thing is that we can actually feel the audience. We can hear the audience as well. And I think that for us is equally important. We can see you, we can hear you. So we feel like we have this rapport. We can tell what candy wrappers. <laughs> <laughs> And we can recognize what kind of phone you have, you know, <laughs> just, just by the length and timbre of the ring. <laughs> that doesn't happen here, thank Jamie, you. Jamie, is it, is it easier to play the piano in the sense that you don't have to work as hard? Or are, are there dangers in that? Well, I, I think, I mean, it's wonderful to have a great acoustic, and, and plus you feel... You, you feel you, you feel welcomed into into somebody's really deluxe cottage when you when you walk in here you know, with all the with all the natural wood and and the rock and the stone and it uh, it has a very natural feel I mean just like when you look outside at the shores of Georgian Bay I mean it's 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 really really a great it has a great feel to it so yeah. so that's a great place to start and then it's got great sound there's a great piano so you know what's what's not to love I mean it, it all it all feels it all feels good. Is there a specific character to this festival, the Festival of the Sound, that um, you don't capture elsewhere, other festivals that you're going to and, you know, have traveled to? Well, I, I, this sort of goes back to your first question, at, you know, sort of BC, before the concert hall <laughs> days. <laughs> and I was going to add that um, the one thing I remember most was that, you know, really, we didn't know this part of town at all. We came as far as St. James Church, and we, we basically spent all of our time over there, right? So Dairy Queen was our, our, our restaurant, and I think we stayed at, at the time, it was either the Best Western, I can't remember. It was a motel, but, a couple motels up but there. But it was the motel, um, it's the town and country, and I remember, I miss actually staying there because we had so many great opportunities to meet people that were also staying there. Everybody would just sort of hang outside their rooms. There would be these chairs, and they, people have their drinks or their snacks, or, mm -hmm. you know, and we don't Or really their drinks. drinks. <laughs> <laughs> but in most places, we don't have that time or that luxury of, of, of that interaction. It's usually after a concert at a reception, or we plan to go yeah. out and eat after, but you don't, these chance happenings are rare, and that's what's so great about it this place. Yeah, being a small town, and Paris Sound's a town of just over, what, 5,000 people, plus more in the summer, of course, but it's a relatively small town, and I guess there are less distractions, you're more focused on the festival, and less temptation just to pop down to the nearest town for the evening, you know, because the nearest town is a couple of hours at least away. <laughs> when you're touring, who drives the van? Take not, turns. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Jamie and I share. Yeah. yeah. Actually, Jamie made a really cute analogy in a, a chamber music uh, seminar that we were just at, and I forget why you brought this up. Oh, it, it was. Uh, <laughs> It was in the development of the 4A C minor piano quartet, and and there's this really sort of lovely, quiet, dreamy melody that it gets passed around, and as it got passed around, it kept getting slower. <laughs> and so I was telling him, you you have to at some point have somebody to to you know be be tempo cop and sort of bring things back. And it reminded me of when we'll be driving somewhere on the road and uh, Roman and I'll be like blah blah blahing in the front about something or checking texts or emails or maps or something and then we'll hear this voice in the back saying green <laughs> 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 and then we pull away 